Hello again, Steve Nugent here from Frontier Ag and Turf. I want to go over uh, the 2630 interface with the John Deere Seedstar XP planter and some of the things that you have to set up on the screen and uh, some of the things to watch out for. So, hope you enjoy this little video. Here we have what you're going to see when you go to the planter page on your 2630. Now from the top down, we'll go through everything. This button here, as you see it's got a little bullseye on it, and then a slash sign, and a green square with lines. Now the green square with lines always means acre. So if we really think of what this is, this is target per acre. Your target seeds per acre rate, which right now this one's set to 32,000. Now this button over here, which is cor correlating to this uh, part of the screen, has a little seed per acre. What this ends up being is your actual seeds per acre. Now if I want to on the fly change seeds per acre, I can hit this button and cycle through my seeds that I have set up. This is going to give me an actual number, what the planter is actually producing at the moment. If I hit this button, all it really does is split the planter into two or three depending on how many hydraulic sections you have on the planter. So a 16 row planter will have two, a 24 row planter will have three, a 12 row planter will only have one. So when it's like this we're looking at the average of the two halves of the planter. When I hit the button it will show me exactly what each half is doing. Which could come in handy if you're having some problems and you want to try to diagnose whether it's a hydraulic issue, electric issue, so on and so forth. This portion of the screen here right now is set to seeds per acre and it's showing us what each row is doing population wise. Now the middle of this graph is represented as 32,000 seeds per acre because that's what we have set in there. So every row is going to do slightly above or below that number. And this is what each row is doing right now. Underneath here, these are our row command sections. Now a John Deere corn planter can have up to 16 sections programmed into it. Uh, so on a 12 row or a 16 row planter you can have every row be a section if you would like. A 24 row planter you're still limited to 16 sections so some of the rows have to be bunched up two at a time. When I'm operating in the field these will be green while we're going and they turn gray when they turn off automatically. So when you hit your headland or a previous covered area they will turn gray. You can also manually start shutting down rows if you would like from either side and you can turn them back on one at a time or hit the enable all button and they all pop back up. This button here, QS Reset, what that stands for is Quick Start. Um, what will happen with a planter if we're starting from scratch is that a planter moving at zero to two miles an hour doesn't ask for enough hydraulic capacity from the tractor to spin the hydraulic shafts fast enough to get your desired seeds per acre right away. What the QS reset button does is fools the planter into thinking it's already traveling five miles an hour and it asks for more hydraulics so that the shafts will spin at full speed as soon as you take off. You'll notice when playing with this button that if you hit it once Every time you stop and take off again, it starts on its own. And you'll know that it's working because this counts down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Now what that's doing is that for those 5 seconds, it's spinning the shaft at full speed. It doesn't mean wait till 0 to take off. You must hit the button and then go, and hopefully you are up to traveling speed before it hits 0. That one can be kind of confusing, but it's a really handy tool to prevent gaps in the field when you have to stop for things. This button down here looks like a little piece sign with a gear sprocket around it. Well, really, each of these pie pieces means something. Um, when one of them's lit up, it means that you have hydraulic capacity. When the other one's lit up, it means that you have the ability to run hydro uh, variable rate planting. When the third piece of the pie kicks in is when you're actually planting and that means that everything's going right. Now the other thing you can do with this button is press it and it will bring up a screen that looks like this. 
With our hydraulic planters and our vacuum planters, if we ever shut the vacuum off, the seeds fall off the disc. When we turn the vacuum back on, there is a potential for some of those cells to not be populated with a seed. To alleviate that problem, we bring this screen up. Now, if you read, the planter has to be in the air and the variable rate motors have to be engaged. You simply press that button once and it will spin your hydraulic rams one half of a turn. So, theoretically filling the rest of that disc with seed. Some customers like to hit that button two or three times until they see seed start pouring out uh, through the row units. Then they know their disc is full and they can go on planting. Simply hit the cancel button and it brings us right back. These windows here are showing us information that we can kind of select what we'd like to see in here. We have an acre counter to zero, meaning we can go from zero or from a number down to zero. Say you knew you had 30 acres worth of liquid fertilizer, well you could set that at 30 and have it work backwards. Otherwise we have acre counter one, acre counter two, and acres per hour. Now if you'll notice, this box over here has the exact same options. So there's no need to fret about what the two boxes are or what you're really looking at. You can select acre counter one in this one, and you can select acre counter two in that one. And I'll show you in a little bit here how to set those and reset those numbers. Or I can have acres per hour. The simulator is a little lacking, I see, and one of the other options in real life is to have your vacuum meter on one of these boxes as well. So you can tell what each vacuum is doing uh, in water inches. Down over here, we have our targeted, again we see the bullseye, and for this particular planter with Seedstar XP with active pneumatic downforce, we have our target of what our uh, margin is in the air system. Now this has confused some of our, uh, our in-house people and our customers in what we're trying to accomplish here. Really we want the amount of margin that we need to uh, have enough air in there to compensate for traveling through different soil type conditions. Uh, so we'll get into that here as we go. Here is our section where we can pick what we're looking at up here. If you'll notice right now, I'm on seeds per acre. Seeds per acre. If I hit this button, then this changes up here. Now what this second button in is, is singulation. You'll see down here this change too. What singulation really is talking about is skips and doubles. If you see here, this has a couple of red X's on some of the cells of the disc. And this has two seeds here and two seeds here on the cell of the disc, simply showing doubles and skips. So in this simulation, row 7 is having a bunch of doubles while row 8 is having a bunch of skips. Now what we can do to help main, uh, manage some of that is to increase or decrease the amount of downforce we have on our planter. Sometimes not enough air or too much air can be causing these problems. The next button over is seed spacing. Now you'll notice our bar graph isn't in the middle anymore. It starts at the bottom. And our picture here also correlates to our picture there. Now what this CV stands for is the coefficient of variation. A very fancy term to describe how far off of 32,000 are we. So currently some of these rows are getting pretty high. We want all of these bar graphs to be as low as possible so that we are as close to our 32,000 seeds per acre as we can possibly be. Now down here it's going to show us our seed spacing, 0.23. That's our variation on the average of the planter. We want that to be as close to zero as possible. And again, the main adjustment for the, this is our downforce pressure. When I press this button here, it's going to bring up uh, the downforce on each wing of the planter. Now again here we're only seeing three graphs because this particular planter has simply three sensors on the three wings of it. However many wings you have on your planter determines how many sensors you have. We put our check mark in the active pneumatic downforce box, and here in this gauge we want to be as close to center as possible. 
So we mess, we adjust our pneumatic downforce to get these gauges to be as close to center as possible. And finally our last one that we look at here is our ride quality. Another bar graph that starts at the bottom. This one we want as close to the top as we can get 100% ride quality. So we've just gone through these last four buttons and in actuality the main adjustment for these is our downforce. So if I don't have enough downforce, my ride quality is going to be all over the board. My downforce scale is probably going to be way low. My spacing might be way out of whack. And my skips and doubles might be all over the board. Now I can simply adjust that by raising or lowering my target margin in my downforce. Again, margin is just how much extra air is there. So if I don't have enough margin in my system, I might not be giving it enough air to compensate for changing conditions. Then again, we could have too much air and it wouldn't adjust enough if the soil conditions loosened up. So it's definitely something that has to be uh, played with a little bit and definitely adjusted as soil conditions change. These two buttons here if we press this button, it just simply cycles through these five screens. And again, up here it always tells us what we're looking at. This button down here will give us a full screen shot of all four of those functions. So it all kind of depends on what you want to look at. And again, press any button you'd like. It's pretty hard to mess with it at this point. Now, as for setting the screen up, that's where this side comes in. We're on the main screen right now, planter, and that's what the top button is. If we hit the second button down, G, <clears throat> this is going to be planter configuration. Now we want to make sure we got the right amount of rows and right row spacing in there. We want to make sure all our seed sensors are on. Headland warning suppression. We always want to make sure that's checked. Uh, one of the early complaints uh, when we came out with the clutches and the disconnects uh, for, for uh, roll command was that every time we hit the headland the whole screen had a warning that told us all our rolls weren't planting. Well we know that, we're in the headland. What this does is make that warning go away. So it knows that when we hit the headland it doesn't have to warn us that our clutches have turned off. On the drive section we just want to make sure that we're set to variable rate vacuum pro series Again, these all come pre-programmed, but if something's going wrong, these are some of the screens we just want to verify. Now down here, the H button. This is where we set our crop type, and this is where we set our disc. So a lot of times a planner will show up where it's set to a standard disc. We want to go in here and scroll all the way down to the Pro Max 40 disc, which most planners have. The other thing in this section is where we go into show rates. Now on this variable rate planner in the simulator, it was set up with two rates, 32,000 and 32,300. Well, I want to turn on all the rest of my rates, and I want to do prescription planting. Prescription rate is always going to be rate 6, and I'll show you that right here. If I hit change rates, I want to turn on rate 6. And you'll see when I get into it, I turn it on, and the simulator isn't in here under letter H is where we can set up our rates for the variable rate planter. We go into show rates and as you see we have six rate options. If I hit change rates it's going to bring up my list. So right now rate 1 the target is set to 32,000. The high and the low are 35,200 and 28,800. All that means is that's when the warnings are going to go off when each individual row is being looked at for high or low warnings and you can adjust those as needed. Now if I want to go into rate 3 I have to turn on the rate, set a target, say I want a 36,000 and it automatically populates the high and low. Say I want to turn on rate 4, my target of 30,000 sets my high and low. This is also the section where we would turn on rate 6 for prescriptions. If you are doing prescription planting, rate 6 is always the prescription rate. So you have to go in and turn that on. 
Now that I have selected multiple rates, if we go back to the main run page, when I hit my target seeds per acre button, it cycles between those three. So, now the other part that is important when dealing with prescription rating and with planting with variable rate seeding is the documentation side on the green star end of the 2630. Let's go through that real quick. If I hit main menu and go into green star, we really are focusing on these three buttons, resources, equipment, document. Under resources, we must have a client, We must have a farm, and a field. Now that we've told it where we are, we need to tell it what we're doing. We are planting, and this is going to be the 2014 crop season. Operator, you don't have to put anything in there. You can if you'd like. All of the information that you put in here is what's going to show up on your planting reports down the line. Under equipment, you must make sure your tractor type is selected, Oops. the machine name, and model. And then make sure that our offsets are put in correctly. You'll see there that some of the offsets are already pre-programmed, but if I go into change offsets, this letter D is almost the most important measurement of all. It's how high off the ground the receiver is and the screens don't like to have that auto populated. For most tractors the measurement is 125 but I suggest you get out and measure that yourself. Under the implement our planner should be auto populated because it, need, it knows um, what's been plugged into it. And then down here under document this is where it all comes together. We need to tell it what we are planting. So we're going to pick corn. Now I need to add a variety and every variety is going to get a color. So if I have a particular brand and variety that's going to give it the color of light green. And what that signifies is that my whole planter now has that variety in it. The reason we have color coding is that if I want to have multiple varieties in the planter You'll see already the next variety has a different, uh, different uh, color. So I can make a new brand and variety. And it's going to automatically split the planter in half. Now I can hit the assign variety to rows button if I want to change that. Let's say the light green variety is only in rows 1 through 4. And the maroon one is in the rest of the planter. Well, that's how that's going to look. Now, the reason I brought you to this page is to show you how to set the variety, but also the prescription planning process is two steps. On the planter side, we do have to have selected the sixth rate, which is prescription. But on this screen, we also have to select our prescription, which is always the little RX button. And this is where we are going to import the shape file in which your prescription has been written. Now when you put in a thumb drive that has a prescription shape file on it, it's going to show up right here. It's going to have our minimum and maximum and what our rates are. We press accept and there we go. But it's a very important step. The prescriptions won't work without it. So again, resources, client farm field task, equipment, make sure you got your tractor and implement in there, and document. Make sure we put our varieties in, and have, our, and have our prescription turned on. Hopefully this has been a little bit of a help, and you can always give us a call at the store, and we can walk you through some of these steps as well. Thank you.